are a lot of my friends who have strong opinions, feelings, beliefs about the jab, about taking the the injection. Uh, many are calling it a vaccine. Some are calling it a experimental injection. But a lot of my friends are pretty passionate about it one way or the other. And unfortunately, I would say 98% of them on both sides of the issue are, are not coming from to their strong positions through true independent research and study. Yeah, they've watched a dozen videos from the same people and the friends who they recommend in their groups, uh, their, their social circles, their, their little in-groups. And they've watched those and they've come to the conclusion that is the same as the videos that, that they've been watching. And maybe that's good information. Maybe it's true. Probably not for both sides, but for one of the sides, it's probably true. And I don't know which it is. I do know that I am 50 pounds overweight and almost 50 years old. And even though I'm overweight, and even though I'm not a, a complete spring chicken, with the current uh, COVID thing going on, I'm not at that higher risk. I've looked at the numbers closely enough to know that a lot of the other actions I take in life are much higher risk than me catching COVID and dying from it or, or having serious complications. And my, my neighbor, uh, just uh, actually son of my neighbor two doors down, got a bad case of, of, of some bug or COVID or something. They called it COVID, but you kind of have to in 2020 and 2021. You can't, can't get seriously sick and, and have it labeled anything except that. But so it was labeled that. And, and let's say that it really truly was the, I don't know if it's the Charlie variant or, or if they're up to, I guess they're up to Delta now or Omega or something, but whatever it is, it was a, a nasty thing that he got and he was in the hospital for a good while. And, and I saw him sitting on his mom's porch and he had oxygen hooked up to him and, and it would, had to be very unpleasant and scary and such. So despite being middle-aged and fat, I'm not that worried. It's just, I'm not that worried. I take ATVs off the side of mountains. I, I drive a car 10,000 miles a year. I've, I've been on airplanes flying around. Um, I, I'm in country where there are a lot of avalanches and lightning strikes. And, and I, there are just so many things that are likely to kill me. And, and I'm not worried about COVID. Now, there, there doesn't necessarily need to be an absolute uh, correlation between what I should be scared of and what I am scared of. Um, I, I am much more scared of, I don't know, dying of a lightning strike than I am of COVID. Now, maybe the numbers come out to say that I should be more scared of COVID than lightning strikes or more scared of other rare events like dying of COVID at, at my age and, and my general demographic. But regardless of whether my fear is lightning or COVID or car wrecks or something else, I don't have any more information than, than my brain has the power to process, than I have time to feed my brain. And whatever it is that I've experienced, and, and I, I bring it all into my head and I contemplate it, and it rattles around from what people say, it's mostly empty inside there, but it rattles around in there. And I come up with a, a risk assessment. I come up with an, an idea of how scared I should be of a thing and what countermeasures I should take. And in the case of COVID, I have... I'm not going to say zero concern. Actually, it is true. I have zero concern. I don't think there's a zero chance that I will get it or that I'll die from it, but I have zero concern. I do have a little bit of concern about lightning strikes. I do have a little bit of concern about car accidents. I mean, these things are all things I think, yeah, okay, that could happen. Being overweight, gosh, I'm middle-aged. I'm likely to have a heart attack within the next 5, 10, 20 years. So yeah, those things I'm all kind of, kind of a little bit concerned about. Not necessarily going to change my behavior, even though I should be smart enough to do that. But long story short, I'm not scared of COVID. I own my body. If y'all think there's some really cool vaccine out there that does a really good job of something, take it, do your research. And if you trust the organizations that are pushing for it hard, big pharma and the government, if you say, you know what, I've never known those two organizations to try to 
pull the wool over anybody's eyes or being the least bit dishonest. They always make sure what they do is good and, and right for humanity. And they both strongly urge everybody to take the jab. And therefore, since, since you trust that, do what you want to do. I'm not going to not going to try to stop you. If you ask my advice, I'll, I'll offer it if, if I have any. But I, again, I don't know about this stuff. I only get to choose for me. Don't I? Will you please let me do that? And that's my concern. That's my issue. Is when people are pushing for me to do something. And it's completely nonsensical. Like the, the, the numbers and the reason I would, and, and you know, it's what one in 27,000 people who have, have taken the vaccine jabs, if they're exposed to COVID, even this Delta variant, they're going to get seriously sick or die from it. One in 27,000, holy moly, like that's nothing to be worried about. You, if those chances are so good, then why do you care if I go to your grocery store with you? and we'll shop beside you, or if I get on the airplane with you and sit across the aisle or beside you, and I haven't been vaccinated, and, and I don't wear one of those silly, what they call them, fishnets or whatever, the, the things over your mouth that don't stop COVID. I, I don't wear those, and, and I don't take the vaccines, and, and maybe I'm wrong, but I, just, I don't do that stuff. But if you have this wonderful solution that everyone should be scrambling to get, and we need to get at least 90 eight percent of the population to do it well if it works do it but don't worry about me when you see in the grocery store like if you kind of hold your hand up a little bit then i won't come over and give you a hug otherwise i might because i probably like you and even if we disagree about this i probably still like you now if you're trying to get other people to initiate force against me and force them to put a, a something into my body no, but now we have a little bit of a problem. I, I spent time in law enforcement as a detective and I've, I've worked rape cases and I've worked you know, child molestation cases. And, and I don't think, <laughs> I, I think it's kind of a, a baseline thing that as a human being, other people don't get to put stuff in your body unless you want them to and you say it's okay. And I don't care if that's the man's <laughs> or a vaccine. If it's somebody else's body, then we don't get to tell them what they get to put in it or not. That's their choice. If they want to eat broken glass or, or have a shot or drink milk or whatever they want, that's their choice. And I've sure ranted on a bit here. And I hope that some of the things I've said kind of gives you an idea that I'm not trying to be a jerk here. And I know you really, some of you really want me to take this jab. And I've asked the questions that, oh, Will it keep me from ever getting COVID? No. Will it make, if I do get it, will it make the symptoms less? Eh, some studies say yes, not really. Will it keep me from passing it on to others? Eh, not real. So it's not effective. Well, then the other study says it is effective, 27,000 to one chance. I wonder if that 27,000 to one chance that I mentioned, that if you had the jab and somebody is around you that has COVID, you have only have one chance in 27,000 of, of getting the COVID. I really or dying from it. I'm not sure which it is. I wonder if the numbers are that different in general life. Uh, even if you haven't had the jab, what are those numbers? There haven't been good, true, honest studies done. And the organizations that have been doing the studies all have a, a, a dog in the pony show race or whatever that, that failed analogy is that I was trying. They all have something to, to lose or, or, or gain from it. And, and it doesn't mean they're wrong. It doesn't prove that they're being a bad guy about this, but it makes you suspicious. It makes you suspicious. And at this point, August, 2021, I'm not interested in the jab. I don't want to do it. And I don't want to be coerced into it. You know, if you don't do it, you can't come into the grocery store. If you don't do it, you can't go to work. You can't go to this location or that location. No, I'll let you know if you've had the shot, you've had the jab, come to my house, come say hi. We'll make an appointment first. Come say hi. We'll hang out. We'll barbecue. If you haven't had it, come hang out. We'll barbecue. We'll hug. I, I don't care. And I'm not worried about it. I'm not at all concerned about it. And you might be thinking, wait a minute. You're one of those wacko Republicans. 
Here's proof I'm not. I am not scared of illegal aliens. Huh, I must not be a conservative. I must not be a Republican because they're scared to death of the illegal aliens. It sure seems to me. If, if you can judge the, the corporate press, if you can judge what they say, then that's what they're supposed to be scared of. Am I supposed to still be scared of AIDS? Am I supposed to be scared of global warming? Or is it, is it climate change now that I'm supposed to be scared of? The North Koreans, I'm supposed to be scared of them. How about Iran? Or is it Syria? Or is it Venezuela? Or is it illiteracy? Or is it overpopulation? What is it I'm supposed to be scared about? Friends, the government and other, the people who run the government, uh, who are the same people that you know, run the, the press, I, I don't buy it. I'm not worried. Sorry, I'm not scared, but I'm not, my hands aren't shaking for real. I'm not scared. Please stop trying to get me to be a, a scaredy cat about this stuff. Now, now, of course, I might die. I might die of COVID tomorrow or next week. If so, it doesn't change my argument. It doesn't change the logic of my thinking. It doesn't change my argument. If I die of COVID in the next week or month or five years or whatever, or the next big scary virus, once this one's kind of, they can't keep acting like it's such a big deal and the truth comes out, then they'll come up with another one. Let's say I do die from it. Uh, doesn't prove anything wrong. It just proves that, hey, that guy is willing to take more risks. Heck, I know a guy who goes out. He, this guy, he goes out these sheer rock walls. He climbs up them. No reason. No reason to go up that mountain. Guy goes out there with ropes and puts that chalk on his fingertips, and he climbs up the mountain, up, the, up these rock faces. Like, what kind of risk? He could fall. He could hurt people below him. He could hurt himself. Okay, now, of course, he he... I'm incredulous that people choose to do that. But if, if he asks me, he says, hey, you think I should go do that tomorrow? I was like, no, that's crazy high risk. Don't do that. But if he says, yeah, I think I will anyway. I said, well, more power to you. Go enjoy it. It's your choice. You do whatever you want. I'm not here to tell you what to do. Well, I sure hope that person doesn't come back to me, though, and tell me I've got to get a jab or wear one of those face thingies that doesn't do what they do what they even claim it's there for like come on let's just get along let's be nice people let's trust each other let's be good people let's evaluate our own risk let's let other people evaluate their risk let's live and let live is that too much to ask i don't think so